things that no longer exist in, in the GEA. And I suppose when we're looking at all these classic games that are on TV at the moment, you're kind of reminded of them. And um, I, I really enjoy seeing the line balls in both hurling and football. And um, anyone who's watched Kerry Offley All Ireland from 1982 will have seen it, where the linesman places the ball on the ground, and you cannot disturb it, move it, place it, uh, sit it up on top of the grass or anything. You just have to strike it where it is. Has anything else stood out to you guys? Uh, I'll, I'll start off with you, Michael. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of things. Um, the couple of things I always liked, like the long sleeve jerseys. Remember wearing long sleeve jerseys back in the day, particularly, you know. January, February, March, and you just don't really see them anymore. Lads are wearing Under Armour underneath the tight fit kind of jerseys. That would be one that sticks out. Then there was like the famous, and thank God they're not around anymore. Remember those cardboard kind of shorts that were like, like any bit of whiteness you had up around the top of your legs, it definitely showed them off. They were the most unflattering things of all time. They were absolutely awful. It's kind of Kind of, I'd always think like probably mid to late 90s would be that. And then it's like almost revolutionary. The silk shorts came in. You're like, why didn't we have these 10 years ago? Like, But they're, they would be two that stand out anyway, just off the top yeah, of my I, head. Yeah, I seem to remember one of the All-Irelands in the 80s and Connor Hayes playing full back for Galway. He obviously had that ridiculous sort of half bicycle helmet looking thing with no face guard. But he also, um, I think... Though some of those shorts were barely legal, like they were bet up inside a man, you could make out the full shape of a man. They were uh, they were fairly racy and barely legal, Fintan. Yeah, sorry, Warren. Like the, the thing you're saying about Conor Hayes as well, the kind of the different hurling elements has kind of stood out, hasn't it? With some of the games that have been kind of shown, uh, like a couple of the '90s games, um, Timmy McCarthy's one was kind of kind of stood out for in, in the Cork attack with the kind of the white helmet that he had, Conor Bonner. Uh, there was a guy who came on, it was a couple of weeks ago, Claire Galway was on 95. Uh, I can't remember his name now, with kind of big, massive red helmet. He came on for Galway in the second half. I think it was similar to the one that, is it Christy Heffernan of Kilkenny used to kind of wear that kind of, uh, the astronaut kind of box one of them. Yeah, yeah I, I um, had one of those astronaut ones, one of the, the square ones with the flat top. I remember playing the Parish League game when I must have been, I don't know, 10 or even younger years of age. And the rain was gathering on the top of it, and every so often it would just spill down over your face completely. It was an absolute horror show. And I got the space helmet then, the big round one after. Um, anything else that's, uh, that's from bygone days that we don't see in GA anymore? Yeah, no, I, yeah, no I, I, there's a couple of things like I would definitely think, like, like ground hurling is a one. Like I've looked back at some of the classic games, and like if my own county, Offaly, is probably the county that's probably most synonymous with ground hurling. And like it's just totally alien. You look at, I even look back at the 2004 Leinster final, the last Leinster final Offaly were in, and there was a mighty lot of ground hurling in it. And it's just, you wouldn't even think of doing it now. Like if you did that in training, I've often, you'd often pull on a ball, particularly as a back, or even flick a ball. And lads would be like, just take the ball in your hand, take the ball in your hand. Um, whereas like when we played with, under Joe Dooley even, uh, less than 10, 10 years ago, 10 or 12 years ago, we would have done lines of four, the length of the field, kind of ground hurling. Because it would have been just traditional to what we had done. And you would have seen other teams doing it now. And like it's it's that rare now that if someone does it, it's like, geez, it's rare you see a ground stroke anymore. The only time you'd see it is if the ball drops around the goals and a lad is pulling on a goal, which I think is still one of the most effective ways to get a goal is a first-time strike anywhere from anywhere from inside the 13, I would say. Uh, that and overhead pulling. Uh, you, do, you don't see it half as much. It's funny how the rules of hurling have changed almost. Like, uh, there's a great hurler uh, from Borough, Liam Power. He was part of the four All-Ireland winning teams. And he famously broke all four of his hurls in the 2003 All-Ireland club final against Dunlai. He had them all broke after 35 minutes, just with overhead pulling. Whereas now, almost, if you, if you hear the ash breaking, it's almost like a free. Or it's, you know what I mean? It's still totally legal. But it, you just don't see it half as much now, particularly lads are trying to clean catch the whole time. They'd be another two that would definitely stand yeah, out. Yeah, because like these days, you'd only probably go for the high pull on a, on a puck out or something like that. If you wanted to sort of mark your man's card and let him know you're not just going to be able to come up here and compete for, for every ball with clean for a clean catch, uh, I'm going to give you something else to think about. But Finton, you did a piece with Pat Mulcahy talking about Newtown Chandram and you know referencing the O'Connor twins, Ben and Jerry, uh, recently on the 42. And what struck me was that that was a time when people were giving out about the running game, but giving out about that particular style of play, it's kind of moved on a little bit. It's more giving out about sweepers these days than that particular type of play. 
Yeah, he, he was interesting to chat it because he came from, like, he would have played in the mid 90s, like, he would have won a county senior medal with a uh, division outfit in Cork Avenue, and then he played up until the mid 90s with Cork, so, and he's kind of involved in coaching now, so he's kind of seen the way the kind of game has evolved, you know, and he basically said it was the O'Connor's father that kind of introduced it to them, you know, like his attitude was that if a ball was hit into a, f- a guy in the full forward line, the, f- the guy in the full forward line was always blamed for not winning the ball. Um, so it's the personnel was at fault. Whereas if you know, say you hand pass it to a guy next to you, and the ball move breaks down, it's the style that is at fault. And look, you've all heard it. You've all heard it over the years. You know, the shape of leave it in. You know, teams are are tippy tappy is another phrase that's used a lot. Uh, teams are kind of playing short passing around the middle, but it's just how much. Like Mike reference again there, or kind of off his ground hurting there. Like so, it was clear off he was on a couple of weeks ago in '95, and just couldn't get over. I mean, I know it's 20, 25 years ago now, but. The amount of times guys will get the ball and you know you're just so conditioned to seeing a guy around the middle look for a teammate whereas just that wasn't the kind of way it was then you know and that probably feeds into how low scoring it was when you look back i mean the scoring was i think was was a 113 to 28 to finish i mean that's that's kind of the score after about 25 30 minutes now in uh, in some games um but kind of pat was kind of just basically saying it was completely logical to him what he was being caught kind of around that time around 2000 but like now he's involved with his club and now he sees like if, if you're not doing that now, as he puts it, you're not playing hurling, and it's just how much it's kind of evolved and how kind of change over the years. And, and kind of looking at some of those old games that they've shown over the last while, has kind of shown that um, there was one clip I did see was the clear goal in the five semi final. One of the clear goals was actually a really nice kind of a support play move, which ended with Sparrow Lachlan uh, pulling the ball into the net. But it was kind of one of the rare ones that I've seen over the last while in any of the games that have popped up that uh, it kind of maybe resembles the way hurling uh, is played now. I find it very difficult to listen to Pep Guardiola at the best of times, the way he goes on, a bit pompous. But uh, his his kind of term about I don't pass to move the ball, I pass to move the opposition. So that's you'd imagine the way it's it's moving in GA as well. The teams aren't just lumping it up the field and trying to get it up there as quick as possible. You're obviously trying to create those spaces and those pockets. So another thing, and and you can react on that in a second, Michael Verney. But another thing that that has disappeared from GA is like the really, really olden days. Now, this is even before your hand-pass goals and hand-pass points in hurling and stuff like that. But the Archbishop throwing the ball in in the middle of the field, or even predating that, and also including the Archbishop, you had that situation where both teams had to line up, and it was more or less everyone in the middle of the field, I think, for the throw-in, but certainly all 15 players would be on either side of the field, a bit like soccer. So, uh, Michael Verney, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, just on that one, that's a funny one because we played, uh, who do we play? We played Waterford IT in a Fitzgibbon semi-final down in Dangham one year and Bonner was over Waterford and it's happened a couple of times, the odd time at Inter-County, Davey's done it a couple of times where he's just had all six forwards lined up along the 65 at the start for throwing which is obviously not the, the 14 or 15 lads back in the day but it's something kind of completely alien. It's something that you wouldn't see too often. The one with the Archbishop, I, I think that's brilliant. I, I, lo- I love stuff like that because it's stuff like that that you look back on. It just shows how much things have changed as well. Um, another thing I was just looking back on the 95 on Ireland, you know, like if we didn't have them and we don't have them anymore, that the great halftime interviews with the manager or the selector or the player that may be injured or something like that, we did never got the, as much as I hate to say it, we I've never got the jerl up, Nan. You know, we're going to do it. You know, that was one of the most iconic lines coming out for the second half of Ireland. Funny enough, actually, a couple of years ago, actually, it might have even been 2019, um, I was doing the sideline reporter for Airsport who were doing the live GA games in April. And I think it was, yeah, it was Nafina against St. Vincent's. And at half time, I got um, Mick Deegan who was part of the management team for Nafina. So I was able to do that halftime interview with him and it was kind of funny. I said, so uh, what are you going to do in the second half? I mean, there were a couple of points behind or whatever. And he says, well, I've told the lads to just run at Ger Brennan. His legs are gone. And he said <laughs> this live on TV. It was absolutely hilarious. But see, this is, but see, this is the thing, Shane. Um, and the more than our job as journalists or whatever, the best stuff you get is immediately after a match invariably or the best stuff you get is just like things are so fresh in his head he's going to say what he thinks he's not going to be like oh we're going to stick to the plan or stick to the process he's like he's going to say what immediately kind of comes to mind I used to love those interviews I used to love like the old fashioned I love I look back at the Cork Offaly 2000, just apologise to Finton here, I look back at the Cork Offaly 2000 All-Ireland semi-final and it was like an interview with Johnny Dooley, Offaly captain, Ger Oakley with the jersey off, with just the bare chest out like that on the field after Simon Whelan and 
an interview with Pat Flory, all on the pitch after. And it's it's great. But like you mightn't get a load of quotable stuff, but you get a lot of emotion. And I, something like that, I don't see a reason why we couldn't bring kind of stuff like that back a bit more I know players are sanitised a bit more but I used to love that and even just something else that's missing like Tip won the All-Ireland the hit we're talking about Tip winning All-Irelands obviously but when Tip won the All-Ireland in, in 01 the presentation was on the pitch do you know just different things that have happened different things that have been moved um, throughout the years and we were talking about tactics there like Cyril Farrell was kind of the first one to bring in the third man midfielder it's like late 80s early 90s and it's just amazing that kind of tactic is nearly gone out of the game now and like a two man full forward line is nearly a given. So in thirty years it'll just show you how kind of much things Finn, have changed. What did you make of the pre- presentation on the field? Um like cause you would have had it with Mark Landers also in the centre of the field. It just felt so dislocated from the celebrations. Yeah, I, th- I think it was at ninety ninety nine ninety eight, sorry, it was it when Gollum won his kinda uh, they happened in the Hogan stand. Uh, and was it or two or three was the next one? Um I think it was, yeah. There, there was actually a piece uh colleagues Nate Farrell in 42 did with the 2000 football final at the weekend or last week and Aidan McGowan was talking about that but <clears throat> the 2000 football final replay first of all it's kind of a thing the I take for granted now but there was a big thing at the time we were playing the replay on a Saturday you know this was almost sacrilegious it was early October because there were so few replays and obviously there's been so many over the last while that we've been kind of so used to it all in the finals and then he said the kind of surreal nature of it was kind of compounded by the fact uh, that the presentation took place on the pitch. You were looking at the Hogan Sand, which was being done up at the time. Um, just very kind of surreal for our players when I suppose they would, that carry team with a few years before in 87 have had, you know, pitch invasion was still a thing and subsequently afterwards. Um, and now obviously they're able to, to I suppose, you know, they, they still get to go around to the fans afterwards. But he just said, yeah, it was just kind of very, very kind of a surreal, kind of an odd way to kind of finish the season. Um, but at the same time, I mean, that was, say, you're talking about Mark Landers won 99. It was the same for Kilkenny 2000, Tip 01. Those were big wins for those, kind of the big three, the early aristocrats. I don't think those players, given the way it had gone, the 90s had gone for them, they kind of out of the line, they probably cared too much at that time mm. uh, where, where they got the cup and where it was presented to them, as long as they uh, they got over the line finally. Yeah, and, and people don't, don't forget to get your comments in there. Michael Verney's keeping an eye on them. But, like, for you, Finton, like when you look at the way soccer, it's so commonplace to have the celebrations in the in the centre of the field, and maybe they kind of they've kind of tailored their celebrations to that, like bringing a big stage into the middle and having like confetti or fireworks going off be, around them. And you'd see the same in the Heineken Cup over the years. Maybe it's just that it looked wrong in in the GA because it was like this small little platform in the middle, and it was just it kind of just lacked. I don't know, just the colour and the pizzazz that the occasion probably demanded. Maybe I'm wrong though, but that's just how I felt. It just didn't feel like this was a big moment. No, I, I, I think one of the issues is that the biggest prize in the GA obviously is based on the same stadium. So if you think about soccer, you know, between Champions League final, and World Cup final, or Euro Championship, it's, it's in different venues. But because Crow Park is the big one, the steps of the Hogan has this kind of mythical kind of phrase to it, you know. Um, and different players have kind of talked about it that like you know their big thing is to kind of not be delayed uh, I suppose back in the days of kind of pitch invasions to kind of get up there in time for the cup to be kind of presented now at least they know that they're going to be there but you know even for players as captains and all that to just kind of to get up there and to kind of look around the stadium you know I, I think that's why it has kind of such a special place um, for GA fans I'm sure it's the same for you think Munster Hurling Thurless Ulster Football Clonus that kind of view from particular stands um, where we kind of associate trophies being handed out and I think that's I mean like I'm trying to think of a soccer club and maybe maybe Wembley in the FA Cup kind of sense like you know but I, I think it just kind of means so much to to the player the captain who gets to kind of accept the trophy and his kind of teammates to be looking up at him that's why I think the kind of presentation of the stand holds such a, a special place and maybe why those you know that kind of period when Copac was being developed it just kind of looks so odd uh, the cup being presented on the pitch. Yeah, Michael Verney, you'll, you'll be hoping someday that uh, Offaly can list, lift the Christy Ring Cup, but would you rather it up, the, up in the stands? If you want to lower the blade, we can lower the blade. There's absolutely no issue. Um, just a couple, of, a couple of things in on social media. Yeah, Shane. Um, Niall Carty, I actually loved this because I, I used to think the effect of it on the screen was unreal. He said, bring back the crest painted on the pitch and all Ireland final day. Oh, I used to love that. The ball would almost get lost in it. And even times there was times that like if you if you fell or anything in it, you could your jersey can could end up with bits of paint on it and stuff like that. I used to love that. 
Um, we have a couple of comments in on social media there as well. We have a couple of correct answers to our Who Am I uh, as well. And just John Butler on uh, on Twitter. John Butler, actually a, a bar man, he said about what do I miss from the GA passing around passing around the boot cog spanner around the dressing room. I remember remember those days. And, you know, it was, it was never a uniform uh, boot, kind of cog. It was a different type of one for a different type of boot. So you could have an Adidas one. And if you had a Nike boot cog, it wouldn't work. All this kind of crack. Uh, Philip Lanigan from the Mail actually came up with a good one. What do you miss most from the GA? And he just said games, question mark, which is a fair point uh, in, the, in the current situation. Um, at the what moment. about the, remember when everyone used to wear blades? Instead of cogs or long studs or whatever, they'd wear blades. Have they gone all together? I mean, Finton... When did you when did you last even boot up? I'm not even sure. Jeez, that's a good question. And uh, I suppose given the lack of games, when are we going to get a chance to do it? Do anything like, like that again? Um, but I suppose as well that, that kind of goes back as well. Like what Mike was saying there, like you imagine like everything so kind of drilled down now in terms of team levels of preparation that you know everything's kind of prepared for them and all that. Like you know, there's no none of this kind of scrambling around. You know, you talk about bookies, but you know different types of gear or whatever. Like you know, someone forgets their socks or anything like that. Like you know, just it's all. Uh, it's all kind of laid on for them now. Like there's none of that kind of thing of having to, to be, well, at the, at the top level of kind of Inter County when you hear kind of players talk with the stories and how, you know, the kit man is getting thanks uh, from the top of the, the top of the Hogan stand or, or wherever. You know, it's been such an essential part of the, the team setup. Uh, Michael, uh, you have a big smirk on your face. Go on, go on. Tell no, me. Just, no, just if Fintan was talking about boots and stuff there. Uh, Parik Horn was over our school team in St. Brendan's in Burr and uh, Brian Watkins from my own club, one of the best club runners in Offaly the last 10 or 15 years. He's on the Offaly pan at the moment. Uh, we went down to Flannan's one day and uh, Walkie would be very laid back about things and we like he went we went the whole way down to Ennis and he never said a word or anything like that. He didn't have any boots on him or anything like that. So he was quietly going around the dressing room of Flannan's. Imagine this, like a whole day off school, went down to Flannan's and he's quietly going around the dressing room <laughs> looking for boots. And um, Parik Horn got wind of it, absolutely effed him out of it. And he just ended up, he had to sit on the line for the day. But like it was co- it was commonplace like that he'd look for, he'd get a helmet in the dressing room five minutes before a championship match back in those days. It's just amazing kind of how things have changed. And in a way, in a way it's great. In a way it's kind of a bit sad because they're all the great stories. If you talk about some of the great GA stories now, it's like junior football, junior hurling, where, you know, there's a big lad with a knee brace or where there's a big full forward. You know, it's kind of those, that's what you, like I'd say, if you go to a junior match now, it's so they're still so enjoyable. All the like there's lads dying, there's lads maybe around the beer the night before. Do you know, it's just all that stuff has kind of gone so maybe PC now that maybe you don't get as many good stories. There's still plenty of them out there, you just need to kind Number of find one, them. I you forgot know? my boots for the All Ireland Club final, so I can't give out that much. A couple of others. I was wondering where you gonna bring that up. Yeah, well I might as well get me uh, I might as well admit it rather than let you lower the blade on me. Another thing, D Pete. That was a big thing there one time, and Tiger Bam, that was another thing you'd use to warm up the, the hands maybe. And another thing, do you remember the woolly grips you used to have on the hurlies? It's obviously all the, the more smoother ones now, and they're very cushioned. But they were, they were very woolly, and there'd be tassels coming off them all over the place. Yeah, the towel, yeah, the towel grip, the good old towel grip back in the day. Like, uh, but like, once the towel got wet, it was useless. It was you might as well not have a grip on the hurl at all. So it's one of those amazing kind of things. 